Welcome to High Gluttony, everybody. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we are making pineapple upside down cake for our, our, our episode this time. <laughs> yeah, very exciting. We realized that we haven't really made a dessert yet. I guess technically we did because our very first recording when together we made the granulated caramel slash toasted sugar and these really fucking amazing cookies with it. We didn't end up using that recording. And so later we made the sugar again and put that into our first episode. So we had thought we'd made a dessert and then we realized we hadn't and needed to immediately correct that with some ooey gooey pineapple upside down cake. Actually, didn't we also record an ice cream episode that we have not released either? Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we did two that we never released. Well, well now we have to do we that. Did the, we did the Buckeyes, which... Oh, you're right. And Sugar Scrub together. Sugar so scrub. that felt like... Okay, Desserty. all right. You're right. Back it up a little bit. But We haven't made a cake oh well. yet. <laughs> yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> we had not made okay. a cake yet. That's what we needed. Okay. <laughs> But we feel like this recipe is a world level two because it's it's relatively simple. And actually, if you get canned pineapple, but neither of us were able to source canned pineapple, that would make it a world level one. We are using four different recipes to create our cake, but essentially, <laughs> uh, or three or four, but essentially the steps we're going through are cutting up our pineapple into slices, cooking down our pineapple a little bit making our caramel sauce, making our cake mix, and then assembling all these ingredients into what we called at one point our delicious Frankenstein of a cake. <laughs> so we we pull the cake mix from the recipe critic. Uh, we went with the joy of baking for the topping with a little bit of Cook's Illustrated or wait, is it? Cook's Illustrated or America's Test Kitchen, I forget. Oh, uh, I can't remember one or the other. Yeah. It was on Amer- the America's Test Kitchen app. So yeah, and then we, so we're using a little bit of a Cook's Illustrated for pineapple. Pineapple juice. And using the pineapple juice and the caramel. And I think mm-hmm. that's it. <laughs> I think so. I feel like there was another one, but I can't remember now. <laughs> we'll say it if we if we used it or we'll put it on the website. <laughs> we both used a hand mixer or a mixer for... I used a stand mixer. You use stand mixer and I use a hand mixer. And then we, we really mixed it up with the pans because the <laughs> recipe called for a round pan and we decided we were having none of that. <laughs> of course. Becca decided to use a square pan and I used a bunt <laughs> pan just to make things <laughs> difficult. Uh, <laughs> why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> Mostly I didn't have a round cake pan. So yeah. that's actually what, what happened here. That Yours was out of necessity. Mine was just because <laughs> I just decided to do it. In my pan. <laughs> yeah, because it sounded fun. Because it sounded fun. So be sure to check out our website where we'll share all the recipes. And that's highgluttony.com. And then find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at High Gluttony. Enjoy. Okay, section one. We spend a lot of time talking about pineapple in this section. You will learn some fun things. We both learn some fun things. And then we spend a little more time talking about our pan options. Like we said in the intro, the recipe calls for a nine inch round and neither of us end up using that. And then, so pretty much I talked Becca through cutting a pineapple for the the first time, which for some reason I just assumed she'd done before. And then she was like, no, no, (laughs) no way. It's like everybody's cut pineapple before, right? Nope. And we, we, we do discuss some alternative pineapple extraction methods because I like it. I haven't, I've yet to try it. I got to get another pineapple. Yeah. I got to try it too. One little note you'll hear us talk about is that a piece of mine was a little bit past its peak. So I did end up cutting around those parts, but I don't know if we explained right away what was happening. So just want to let you know what's going on when you get to that point. (laughs) And I do say that I, I typically cut my pineapple with a serrated knife and that's just by personal preference you get the same result with a really sharp knife but a serrated knife helps do some of the work for you so if you don't care about having like a really smooth cut because that's what you're going to get is a little bit of a texture from the sawing motion on a serrated knife but for me with having not as good hand strength and um 
it makes my life a little bit easier when I use a serrated knife for things like that. So it felt really smooth to me. Mm -hmm. So I appreciated that tip. Yeah. Grips the pineapple a little bit better, you know, like you're not, uh, that's, that, that's a little, that stuff's a little slippery. So if you can get a good grip, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So have fun listening to us chat about pineapple. (laughs) So much pineapple. (laughs) I'm going to recommend, do you have a cutting board with little run channel around it? I do. Yeah. I have a wooden one with like a, like a liquid moat border yeah, kind of thing. Basically. Yeah. yeah. A moat. A moat. I, I, I like that. It's a cutting board okay. with a moat. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so to collect the juice you're saying? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're so, so clever. I am clever. Thank you. Now I'm also going to throw another surprise at you because I don't know what pan to use for my cake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I got down a couple of options. I have an eight by eight square. Okay that I was thinking about using, but I also have these like mini bunt pans Ooh! and I want to use them, but I was like, uh-huh. I also probably do the mini bunts and the eight inch because I think that I'm not going to want to fill that eight inch up as much. So I might be able to do two different things. Um, that makes sense. Or I was talking to my coworkers about this yesterday and my coworker said she wanted to do it in a bunt pan. So I got my bunt, my fancy bunt pan down because I was like, oh, that might be good too. So I can't, quite decide what pan I'm going to use right now. <laughs> okay. These are all really great options. They are. And so that's, that's why I was like, um, I, I don't know. The mini ones sound so fun. No, I'm going to use the ca- my cast iron pan. And I didn't have, have maraschino cherries, nor did I really want to buy maraschino cherries today. Mm-hmm. So I have some cocktail cherries that I'm going to use instead. Sounds delicious. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think it would be a bad idea. So. I ended up buying some because I've been wanting a Manhattan and I really wanted <laughs> that little go. maraschino. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense of why you would want to have them. Totally. Have we said what we're making? I mean, we're going to say it in the intro, but we're making uh, pineapple upside down cake. We're trying to figure out what pan Gretchen is going to use, but we are both using fresh pineapple. I did not plan on using fresh pineapple. I really wanted to use canned pineapple since that's what I grew up with. That version was with canned pineapple. So, oh no, your leaves aren't supposed to pull out when you do, when you pull on them. But I did, I did, my leaves are pretty well in there. So, okay. I just tried it. Mine didn't fall out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And you, and you don't necessarily want a pineapple that smells like pineapple. I don't remember at what point I was informed that this is not proper because by the time they start to smell like a pineapple, they're starting to ferment. Like oh. I haven't eaten fermented pineapple my entire life, basically. <laughs> so I don't remember where I learned that, but that was something they told me. When I went to the market today and asked if they had canned sliced pineapple, the guy was clearly appalled, but he also was like, I saw this trick the other day for eating pineapple, which was that you like slam it down a couple times on its base and then put it on its side and roll it around and try to kind of loosen it up. And then you can grab the like scales on the edge and pull them and you can pull a chunk out and it'll go all the way to the core. Oh yeah, because the, the okay, so that yeah, that goes to the structure of a pineapple and how this is like basically like the stamen kind of thing. For most I pineapples are are seedless, mm-hmm. um, but this is basically both the fruit and the flower. So like each of these segments is yeah a little piece. So you'd be able to pull off a piece of the side. And just, yeah, that wouldn't be great for our purposes. No, that's what I was like. No, that's not helpful. I need slices. But super cool trick. Slamming, it made me think of slamming like, pineapple. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, how does this start off? What are we talking about? But it reminded me of an artichoke. And then I was feeling mm-hmm. just like, or just appreciating how similar an artichoke and a pineapple look to each other in general. Yeah. I mean, like they are very spiny. So to start, I usually will cut off the bottom. Okay. Uh, and so you're going to do the bottom and the top, and that way you have two flat surfaces to work from. And okay, I use so a serrated a serrated knife. Just feel like it works. Like that's just like a, my preference. Like a bread knife. Like, like a, a bread knife. knife. Okay. And how do you do? You need to. You don't need to clean it or wash it off first, right? 
I mean, you should I did wash rinse it, I guess, mine but, off. Yeah. Because uh, when I got it home, I went to smell it just because, you know, I like mm-hmm. smell things. <laughs> and it smelled a bit like um, pork paint. So I was less like, I hope that's just on the outside and the pineapple isn't actually infested with TH. What is that? I forget. I forget what the chemical compound is that does that. Mm. It's that kind of gnarly cardboard kind of smell. Got it. I just cut off the bottom. I I did too, and I cut way too big of a chunk. Sorry, pineapple. Oh, it smells really good. Like, totally put my nose into it. And of course, if you're like me, you probably didn't get it super straight, but that's okay. So then you just want to go from, like, along the side and... uh, Can I show you this real quick? Yeah. Is this okay? Mm. Try cutting another slice off the bottom and let me see what that looks like. Well, the bottom... Well, okay. That was the the bottom or the top? That was the top. Let me see. Just take another slice off and then show me. Okay. I think it's okay. Okay. Because I was going to say it's probably just a little bit past its prime. So you're starting to get a little bit of rot in the top there. Got it. Sorry. Okay. I thought that was the bottom. (laughs) My bad. No, I was just like, oh, should I do the bottom too? But no worries. Yeah. Okay. So now back to what you're doing. So we've we've cut off the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. No, the globes. (laughs) No, what did we say? The North Pole Pole. and South Pole. (laughs) That's what it was. And now How you're are cutting the stem off. Longitudinally. That's a fun word to say. <laughs> top to bottom. Oh, top to bottom. Are you trying to make it as much of a circle as possible? I, I, I'm trying to keep it relatively circular. But since yeah. we're going to have to cut it in half to get the core out. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I'll, sh- I'll show you a couple different options. This is fun. Yeah. Something new every day. I have another right. pineapple story. Oh, for- you do? Or anecdote, I guess, or, or fun fact. Oh, sure. Did you Great. know pineapple is the international symbol of welcome and hospitality? Do you know why that is? Well, I think it's because, well, f- for a while they were just viewed as like something only rich people could have. But then when they became more available, people would put them in their windows as like a sign of a like welcome space for travelers. Well, or to basically brag that they had a pineapple. Oh, um, when it was like really expensive yeah. still. Yeah. Because yeah, like they, I was listening to Saber, mm, it was originally mm-hmm. food stuff. And I was listening to them today, their pineapple episode. And they were talking about that people, there was like a pineapple rental service that wow, you could rent a pineapple so that you could look like you were rich. To, <laughs> it's like rent the runway. Pineapple it's, version. Essentially, yeah. Pineapple <laughs> version. Okay. So we have we have a couple options here as far as how we want to cut that we can cut this. I didn't okay. quite cut off all of my eyes, but you sort of are aiming to do that. And that's the little brown spot. The round, like brown spots, things. yeah. Like a potato. Now that I've got all the skin off of mine, and in most of the eyes. And okay, same. Here, here are the ways we can cut this. Because at least one of the recipes recommended cutting it into quarters, removing the core, that way and then making slices otherwise here's an alternate version is we can cut basically a half on the side on either side of the core and then you're left with a thin strip on either side for snacking let's do that (laughs) that way you end up with some nice like half circles at least right and we how many do you think we'll need for the cake it's only on the outside and the top right oh yeah and that outside thing is a whole new thing to me Oh, right, right. And I'm going to take my the core of my pineapple and put it into my drink-making jug and put water on it and then let it sit for a while. And then I will have mm. pineapple water. Delicious. I love the core. That's great. I don't ever hear, I, I mean, I don't, this isn't something I follow very closely, but I often don't hear people say, this is a way to use the pineapple core. I mean, you can eat it too. I definitely spent a lot of time as a kid gnawing on pineapple cores. <laughs> And to be fair, not just in my young life. And how thick do we want these slices? Probably no more than a quarter of an inch thick. Mm-hmm. Since we're going to have to cut, cook them a little bit. I mean, that's the, typically the size of um, canned rings of pineapple, I think, is about a quarter of an inch. Got it. Ah, got a little cut on my finger earlier today. And this is very painful. Oh, God, yeah. Nothing like a little acid, right? And an open wound. Well, it's, and, and part of that's like the enzymes that exist in pineapple too. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's used sometimes as a meat tenderizer because it's actually 
like a really good enzyme in it for that. Cool. Forget what recipe that is. I've done that before where like you take it, you can take like meat and like marinate it in the actual pineapple juice. Mm-hmm. Either that or like flash uh, boil like really thinly sliced meat into then in some pineapple juice and that'll help tenderize it too. I've done that before. So I didn't end cool. up with very, very much juice come, that came out of mine. So I'm kind of glad I got I got some, but hopefully also cooking it will result in some liquid. Yeah, same. I did not get like nearly as much as I expected. I might have a can of crushed pineapple around here somewhere, but that's just going to be like sugar, right? Maybe. <laughs> right? I'm I'm juicing my core. There you go. Good idea. Thank you. So pineapple core plus two snacking pieces equals almost a quarter cup. Actually, maybe like an eighth of a cup of juice. All right. Not bad. It's a start. Yeah. All right. So in this section, we finally talk about the actual steps to prepare said pineapple upside down cake. And we will outline again what recipes we're using for what. And I'm sure it's not entirely clear since we're using three to four different recipes for this cake. So just be aware, you might be confused. (laughs) Good luck. We're trying to help you out now as much as we can. (laughs) But we do start off with cooking down our pineapple just a little bit before we head over into making our caramel sauce. And we'll have a little video for that that we'll put up. And then get into what we're enjoying while we're creating our delicious hot mess of cake. (laughs) And we get into some tracking apps that you can use for your, if you're interested in sort of tracking your cannabis usage and what effects you get from different things so that you'd be a little bit more educated shopper. Yeah, that was a fun little side quest. (laughs) (laughs) And then... We're on to making our caramel sauce. We always love the opportunity to use our granulated caramel or toasted sugar that we made in the first release. But Gretchen, you did have a few issues with the chunkiness of that, right? Uh, Yes, I'm sure I should have put it through the uh, good old food processor (laughs) before. So delicious. So So much trouble. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so so we do get into a little bit of why chunks of car- granulated caramel might be a problem. But then, you know, you're also working with the sauce. So hopefully your water will do the work for you. Or pineapple juices in this case. Right. Mm, so delicious. It is caramel. Now we can get the cutting board out of the way. I'm going to start warming up my pan. And I'm sorry, I don't have my oven on. What's the temperature? Have we read any of the steps or anything yet? I no. don't think we have, no. Let's do, um, that. let's do that so that I can also get my oven going. I'm, as, I'm pr- pretty much assuming it's... 350? Uh, yeah, that would be my assumption. Yep, 350. Okay. So I just go ahead and talk with my mouth full. <laughs> uh, it's fine. This is a food podcast. We got to eat. You know what I'm going to eat? going to use to do my pineapple frying is some coconut oil. Ooh, that sounds good. It's certainly not going to make it a bad. Plus, this is the triple filtered stuff that barely has any aromatics to it, so. Sure. Wait, we never read the stuff. Oh, sorry. So we're preheating our oven to 350 degrees and greasing our cake pan. Next, we're going to, well, we're going to cook our pineapple and then cook our caramel. And then we're going to make our cake which involves mixing together your flour, baking soda, and salt. And then in another bowl, you're going to mix butter, sugar, and beat until incorporated. Then you add your egg, sour cream, milk, pineapple juice, and beat until just combined. Then add in your flour mixture. And then, and we'll prepare our pan actually before we make the cake. Because the cake will just basically go right on top. So, what heat do you have that on? Okay, so you're cooking your pineapple in a cast iron. I am. What heat do you have it on? I have it sort of on medium. This is the power boil one, so oh, medium is still quite low. warm. Yeah. Okay. Is should I can can I use grapeseed oil? I have olive oil too, or vegetable, but or peanut. I grapeseed's would, probably I, the most neutral, right? I mean, it depends on the grapeseed oil, but likely, yeah. Mm, okay. I've definitely had okay. some grapeseed oil that was quite aromatic 
hello, I'm grapeseed. All right. <laughs> I'm just letting my pan heat up. I only have two small eggs. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. Or I should say that should be fine. Want to see them? Sure. I, yeah. I think if you have two small eggs that okay. together will make one regular size egg. One large. So we were excited about the sour cream In and the milk component. Yeah. yeah. And so actually what we're doing is we're making a couple hybrid recipes. So we're, we're using a combination of recipes. We're using the cake from the recipe critic because we like that it had sour cream and it also used the pineapple juice to put a pineapple flavor into the cake. But we liked the joy of baking recipe topping. for the topping because it cooks the caramel a little bit. And I think that does really incorporate the sugar into the, the fat a little bit better. And we are using butter for that. So mine are starting to brown a little bit. And I don't really want to get a well, I guess it kind of doesn't matter because we're going to be putting them in a brown caramel. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's sort of start getting them to start cook, cooking a little bit here. And what are we looking for? Just to get it like a nice golden, like a bright golden color. A few minutes on each side. Yeah. Okay. My pan's still heating up. So I'm just watching you. Apparently this part of the pan is bodice. Because <laughs> these up here are pretty much done. We got a couple down here that don't look very... I don't know. Oop, got that one a little brown. Oop, okay. Mm, now this area is warmer. Got it. So we're going <laughs> to just make it real interesting, I guess. <laughs> Try to keep up, Gretchen. This pan is, is, it's got thoughts of its own, apparently. Yeah. Well, where the center of this burner, where I think it should be and where it actually is, I can never actually quite figure out. <laughs> The elusive center of your burner. <laughs> yeah. For this particular one, seems to be quite the challenge. Still not getting a lot of juice out of these, though. I think our theory about being able to get juice out of it from this step is uh, not really salty. Yeah. I guess I'll just have to juice some more of my snacking pieces then. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer. No, it's okay. Are you smoking? What have you smoked today? I had a hit off of my... Desert Gold Layune Pen. Mm. Uh-huh. One of your faves. My, one of my favorites. So this That's awesome. 220 milligrams of THC and 1.725 milligrams of CBD. Nice. We got a new one today I hadn't heard of. I'm going to grab the label in just a second to tell you about it. New flower or new vaporizer? Flower. New to us. New to me. Oh, they're always, always coming up with new ones. I know. I mean, I think, oops, I just took a hit. Oh, I hit in the yard. Oh, no. Lungs are like, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, hey. Well, shit, I don't know where I put it. One second. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. It's called DRH Tropicana Kush. And it it is a THC of 29.8. A CBD percent. Yeah, sorry. A CBDA of 0.1%. And a CBGA of 0.7%. And then it's got 2.6 milligrams of caryophylline, 4.2 milligrams of limonene, 3.3 milligrams of linalool, and 5.7 milligrams of B myrcene. I'm jealous that your your weed comes with all that on it. Isn't it cool? It's really yeah. cool. I really want to start tracking it just because there's so much information that I really should be. I think that relief app, at least. I at least oh, that's know it right. tracks the cannabinoids, but if you add notes on the strains themselves, mm-hmm. it, it will keep that data for you. Oh, that's super cool. The bummer about oh. this dispensary, though, is that they often don't have the same thing twice, but yeah. at least I can start understanding better about how I, my body reacts, how my endocannabinoid system responds to the terpenes. Right. Well, yeah, because then you can at least look for like similar terpene profiles. Yeah. That you're not. And like that even kind of is helpful because totally. you aren't married to a specific like strain. You can just look for similar terpene schemes, you know? Exactly. Which actually felt like a lot of relief in the search because I only know, I don't know, a couple dozen names that I could right? list, you know, I there's hundreds, I'm sure. So yeah, well, especially, so I was going to say earlier and I kind of fell off the train of thought there. <laughs> but that we had at one point learned that yet you can't 
necessarily guarantee genetics through seed growing. Oh, and so mm -hmm. I might have cut my pineapple just a little too thin. It's breaking apart on me. Oh no. I know. Well, I mean, not fine. all of them, but just a few. Because like for the most part, when I'm seeing like apple and pear upside down cakes and most of the other upside down cakes I have, have very small fruit. Like sure. Either, like dice up the apple or dice up the pear or like rhubarb is fairly small. Mm. So I think it's just an appearance thing more than anything else. Okay. They, yeah. I'm trying my best to keep them in shape, but uh, we got a few squirrely ones here. And you make a, oh wait, you were saying something. <laughs> yes, I'm Shoot. sure I was. Yeah. Hmm. That pan might be too hot now. So I am starting to see a few, a little bit of juice coming out of these guys. Cool. Onto the plate. So you should okay. be able, I was going to say, I'm like, I'm sad because I'm not seeing any in this pan. Mm -hmm. And we did say we were going to use the topping from the, the joy of baking, but I'm, but because we ended up having to buy fresh pineapple, if there were, wasn't any cans, we're going to kind of do a hybrid also of America's Test Kitchen recipe. <laughs> Right, so we're floating around three recipes this time. You know, because I'm shameless like that. <laughs> well, it's less than chimichurri, so we're doing better than last time. Wait, sorry, I forgot what you're talking about. Less, oh, less work. Well, um, I mean, less. less references. You said we were, we're like working from three for this oh, one. Oh, right, And I right. think for chimichurri, yes. we had like five to six or something. <laughs> we do our research here, people, so. That's right. We even busted out the, what is that, America's cookbook or something, the thing that my grandma had. Oh, the yeah. Old, old cookbook. But since that recipe was written for wartime, <laughs> And required the use of shortening, which neither one of us was really up for buying. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what is I going to say? So we referenced a lot. Right. We had a lot of different recipes. So just, you know, prepare yourself for that. <laughs> I am also being extravagant by adding some of the, the purchased pineapple juice that I have over here in my caramel sauce. Ooh. Wait, okay. So you're, hold on. I'm still doing my pineapples. Are you on your sauce? Yeah, I needed to get the get something into the pan before it started to burn. I see. So. Can you talk me through this next step? So I added, removed all the pineapple from the pan, and then I added my butter, and I added a little bit of juice. So you could, you, you know, play with pretty much any kind of, you can even just use water. It'll evaporate, basically, by the okay. time we're done with what we're doing here. And that's a quarter cup of butter, right? So half a stick? Yeah. Half a stick. So, you know, the half is this, this does have some nice symmetry because I, we needed a half a stick for the topping and we needed a half a stick for our, uh, for the cake. So that worked out pretty nice. Perfect. I am, so for the liquid you add to the, the caramel sauce, as we're going to call it, it's not truly a caramel sauce because we're using brown sugar and then it's sort of replacing the caramel flavor. Now I am using some of that toasted sugar or granulated, granulated caramel. Okay, wait, can you back up again? Okay, so butter goes in the hot pan, yep. and then you're adding brown sugar and sh regular sugar. In this case, we are actually both using our granulated caramel slash toasted sugar. Yeah. So then- so I'm, I'm using a combination of brown sugar and the granulated caramel. If I can get this okay. chunk to break down. <laughs> okay. Like at least if it, because I was going to put it, this giant chunk of stuff into the cake. And I was like, that's very silly. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to measure out a little more brown sugar. I only measured it out for the cake. Okay. You're going to hear me banging around for a second. All right. And that's three quarters of a cup? Of sugar, yes. Of brown sugar. Right. Okay. Or gran granulated caramel. That works too. Combo. If you have that. You could do a combo. You could do either or. Okay. I like this. Brown sugar is just the coolest consistency to me. <laughs> that wet, I just wet, love playing with wet it. Sand. Yeah. 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 Wet sand. I love that. It's like, does anybody actually make like a brown sugar sand castle kind of thing? Because I think you could. Ooh, fun. Then you get to eat it. Put it yeah. in a big giant cake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of our granulated caramel sugar. I'm going to have to make some more. I know. I'm down to, I maybe have like a cup left. 
and it's basically one solid piece at the bottom. Of the <laughs> exactly. You're down to those chunky bits at the bottom. Okay. So, all right. So let's try this one more time because I think we stopped. Still keep getting interrupted. Through the, yeah. So you take your pineapple out. You put your butter in. If you're using any kind of liquid, put the liquid in at the same time. And, and just about like, I actually have no idea how much I actually added. So I might have done a quarter of a cup. So I would, if you maybe do a couple of teaspoons, do a, a quarter of a cup, teaspoons, okay. tablespoons, um, anything you want to add for flavor. Okay. I told, I, I'm having trouble today staying on the track. So butter, your juice, if you choose to use some, and then your brown sugar or caram- granulated caramel or whatever other combination of sweetener things you use. And then you're going to bring that to a boil. And I'm still trying to get the last chunks of my granulated caramel to break down. (laughs) So we are, we are, yeah, borrowing a bit from the America's Test Kitchen recipe because they were like, cook it to the certain temperature and get it to this and da, 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 da. And I guess that's kind of what we're doing, but we're doing it by eye and not being fussy about the details. Right. So I'm sorry. So then once you bring it to a boil, what, what do you do? Let it thicken a bit. Just okay. so that you make sure you get all your caram your caramel, sorry, the sugar dissolved into mm-hmm. the, the mixture. Okay. And then you can basically turn it off. Cool. So I'm let I'm gonna let mine thicken up a little bit more. I probably added a bit too much liquid. So I'm gonna just Jeez. wait for that to evaporate. Plus my I still got chunks in here, so I need these chunks to melt. Come on, guys. You can do it. Mm, this smells <laughs> insane. It lo- like, is there anything better than the smell of butter and sugar melting? No, no, no. There's really I not. I don't think so. Yeah, impossible. Oh, speaking of impossible, did you watch the Brandy version of Cinderella, the Brandy and Whitney Houston one, as like a Disney movie when we were growing up? I knew of its existence. I cannot be certain if it if I've ever actually watched it. I may have. I may not have. Got it. I was obsessed with this one song on there and. They, it's out on Disney Plus as of yesterday. So I watched it last night and I was Yay. so excited. <laughs> I guess I'll but have to one, watch it. It's really fun. The one song is impossible. And so when you said impossible like that, it just made me want to sing that song. <laughs> All right. Am I almost nearly completely melted? Come on. <laughs> I mean, and, it, and if they don't melt because the, the, pineapple is going to release some juice while the, during the cooking uh-huh. you know they might melt during the baking of the, the cake so i see so you don't I have to worry I... so much about these little clumps no probably okay so i'm gonna just turn this off since it'll be it's still on you know the pan's still warm especially since i'm using cast iron you know there'll sure. still be a little bit of cooking that'll be happening here as it's cooling mm-hmm. down some Section three, now that we've got our pineapple sliced and our caramel sauced, <laughs> it's time for, <laughs> it's time for Gretchen to finally make a decision about her pan. And then we both start greasing those little pans up for the next step. So you're going to start with your cooked pineapple slices. I have, I've, I've been having second thoughts about this though, just in the last few minutes about if we should have been doing the caramel sauce. And maybe that was why partly your your stuff stuck because if we put the car- the caramel sauce down, that would have added another layer of something slippery, mm-hmm. and so would have probably been better. But right, because what? So after we greased it, we put down the pineapple slices and the cherries, and then the caramel sauce. Mm-hmm. And you'll learn in the next section why we're trying we're trying to troubleshoot this now because you'll understand. You'll we'll understand. Get there. We'll get there. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah, and and I decided to layer my pineapple into the pan in a very fancy and elaborate <laughs> manner that did not show up at all and just looked like a hot <laughs> mess afterwards. <laughs> like not a pretty cake. It was not my prettiest cake. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> next time diced diced pineapple maybe. So then it's on to making our cake mix, which which pretty much means we first combine our dry ingredients, then we mix up our butter and sugars together, and then you add your sour cream, your milk, your pineapple juice, and then 
mix your dry ingredients into that combination. Did that make sense? I think so. Uh, <laughs> that was all in the right order and all the right things. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys know this. I'm a little high right now. so You'll never guess. Yeah. <laughs> So that sounds right. It sounds right. I think you got it right. You got it right in the episode. So you'll find out. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it all. And then we talk about rabbits because I have rabbits. And And they love to be part of the show. They do. They really do. Especially, I'm assuming Arya was the star there. And Pod. Oh, what was Pod doing? I can't remember if it was this part or another part where... He came running out, and then Arya came running out, and then, oh, no, we were talking about how your parents couldn't find them at first, and then you were saying it's really hard to have bunnies that are, like, the color of rocks. That look like rocks, (laughs) yes. Yeah. It's a challenge. It really is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So that's fun. We always love when those little bunnies and cats make appearances. But yeah, so after you put your cake together, pour that that nice uh, batter right on top of your pineapple, and uh, into the oven it goes. All right, I have to make it, now. I have to make a decision on what I'm doing as far as uh, containers. Your pan, I mean, pan situation. This is gonna be the hardest part of the whole day <laughs> for me. Yeah. I, I'm I'm really feeling the butt though. I was like, I mm-hmm. I think I need to do it in the bunt can pan. I like so. it. So you'll do the eight by eight pan and the bunt. No, I was gonna do the big bunt, and then maybe if I had leftovers, like if I didn't want to fill the bunt pan too full, I could do a couple mini bunts because it's gonna oh, the, not be a, the big one. Yeah, the big pan. I got it. Both. Okay. You said the big one and I heard the little one, but you're going to do the big one. And then if you have anything left over, they'll go in the little one. Right. (gasps) Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be so pretty. Yeah. I'm going to get my pans ready. And okay. So we are greasing. I'm going to spray. You're going to spray. Okay. My, uh, I'm using an eight by eight square. So mine will be kind of a boring pineapple upside down and I'm excited to eat it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Can I just use the grapeseed oil or should yeah. I? Okay. I'm going to use my uh, coconut spray from Trader Joe's. Nice. Maybe. Maybe. If I can figure out where it's ended up at this point. <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay. I am just thickening up my caramel a little bit. No, I am just arranging pineapple in my pan right now. I'm going to be here a while. Okay. That caramel sauce is fucking delicious. Good. I'm going to grease my pan. It says lightly, right? Uh, I have no idea. Hold on. Oh, okay. I would be certain that it's not heavily. <laughs> it just says grease. All right. Greased up. Okay. Okay. Where did I put my chairs? <laughs> now I got to figure out what to do with them. Okay. So once the pan is greased, we are layering the pineapple at the bottom and, the, mm-hmm. and then adding cherries in the little holes, kind of. Yep. Ah! Okay. <laughs> You're right over there. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. <laughs> I had no idea this was going to make you so happy. Yeah, I love it. I just haven't had it in a long time. My grandma really liked it. And see, now you'll be able to have it whenever you want. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sort of refining my <laughs> what my topping looks like here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make it look like a, a flower. Cool. Hopefully it looks somewhat flower-ish once it's out of the oven. <laughs> Find out. Getting there. Getting there. <laughs> my extra ones I'm just putting on top all right I'm gonna take my caramel and put it over the top of that sure. okay so pineapples cherries and then caramel sauce yeah okay forget what recipe we were looking at that actually had you save a little bit of this and like spread it over the top of the cake after it came out of the oven oh yeah oh, that was mm, that sounds good sort of spreading mine along the sides of my butt pan to hopefully get it like spread out enough I know. Around mine, the I, fruit. And my oh, it pineapple. Like, sorry, you go. My pine- oh, it's okay. My pineapple feels just a little sparse. I wish I had sliced a few more. That's all right. What were you saying? Shit. <laughs> well, if I remember, I'll remember. Definitely. How much sauce did I make? Or are you pouring on? All of it. All of it? All of it. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. 
oh, the addition of the pineapple juice in there is so good. Oh my gosh. And that's just in the caramel. Trying to make sure I get a little bit of caramel on top of each of these cherries. Ah, oh, shit. I put my caramel in before my cherries. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I'll be okay. I'll just squeeze these little juicy little cherries in there. <laughs> free form. We're going free form. That's right. Might throw a little water in that pan and or ooh, booze. I could put a little booze in there. Ooh, good idea. Some bourbon. Mm-hmm. And then we could you could pour that over the cake at the end. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay. We've got that. This would be good on some ice cream too. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I am going to use a hand mixer like the recipe suggests. Okay. I'm assuming I don't probably... have one. So you're put using your KitchenAid, right? Well, I guess so. Yeah. I didn't have it out, but I need to get it out now. Yeah. I mean, you can okay. do it by hand, but it's going to take a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. I'm not very good at that stuff either. Yeah. No. As we know from, what was it? Butternut squash? When I could not make whipped cream. <laughs> well, that was also like, we, we were like, yeah, it wasn't good <laughs> for, for either of us, really, when you're trying to whip it by hand. <laughs> oh, no. Said a large chunk of stuff go rogue. Oh, no. Good. It's mostly sugar. It's replaceable. Okay. KitchenAid. So the whisk attachment then? The beater. The beater. I did a deep clean on my KitchenAid last time I used it, and I'm so happy to see it like all tiny clean yeah hey little guy brown sugar all right so in this next step we're making the cake mix the batter so it's flour baking soda i'm sorry flour baking powder salt yep together in a bowl mix that up okay well i shouldn't have skipped out on putting my caramelized sugar through the uh food processor what happened i got a chunk in here that is uh determined to stay a chunk oh no Take it out and replace it. Now I'm determined. <laughs> okay. Flour, baking powder, salt mixed? Yeah. Mix. Okay. And then we're mixing together butter, sugars, beating, like you said, until incorporated, and then egg, sour cream, milk, and pineapple juice. Okay. Okay. I got this. You got this. I got this. Okay. My mixer's gone with the right. butter and sugars. Come here, hunk of sugar. Get away, fruit fly. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, oh, no, don't. Chew it towards the cake, towards the <laughs> can of sweet stuff that it definitely might be interested in going into. <laughs> My butter just keeps hanging out in the middle of the, 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 atta- the well, the attachment or the, the paddle or the uh, oh. beater thing. And I can't get it to talk to the sugars. Come on. <laughs> Come on, guys. Negotiate. Yeah. This isn't a junior high dance. Come on. Oh, good. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm probably pretty well combined at this point. Am I liquid? Okay. And it just says until incorporated, not like smooth or anything, right? Yeah. So I think that, that we're aiming for a fairly dense cake here. Okay. I had some chunks of brown sugar, so I just kind of ended up using my hands a little bit to <laughs> mix it in. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Eggs, sour cream, milk, and pineapple juice. Is she down there? You see her? Okay, good. <laughs> Do you know it's problematic having animals that look like rock, Becca? <laughs> yeah. You are you have two rabbits that are gray. Well, Pod is brown, like brown, like a brown, brown and brown and gray. And Ari is gray. So they're both hard yeah. to find on occasion. <laughs> have you had the hawk around at all lately? I haven't seen it recently, no, but we've been babysitting them outside too. So, mm, mm-hmm. All right. I'm mixing up. The rest of the stuff. Well, I might I might have held back on part of the wet ingredients and mixed it a little bit at a time because it Oops. doesn't seem to be incorporating real well right now. I think mine's okay. Okay. My dough is done. All right. Yep. All three bunnies are staring at me right now. <laughs> Oh, so my Garject arrived to follow up on our chimichurri convo about Dream Farm products. Oh, yeah? It is awesome. Yeah. I love Yay. it. And I actually got my the juicer I was using on the pineapple. I got it dirty with eggs just now. Mm-hmm. So I used it for more to extract more juice from pineapple. And it was awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. So it does that too. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. All right, so my pineapple juice is in, and then the last step is to add the flour mixture. 
Okay. I'm already adding mine to my pan. So you are ahead of the game. I'm, uh, I'm well, I'm ahead of you. Yeah. I don't know about the game, but <laughs> I'm trying to make sure to cover up everything with at least a little bit of batter so that my, my cherries don't end up in weird places. <laughs> they may end up in weird places anyway, but not on purpose. But. Batter's okay, though. Tastes good? Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. No, even my batter out. Oh, God, it's good. Okay. <laughs> going in the oven. Oh, you're going in. I'm going in. And how long does it bake for? 30 to 35 minutes. All right. Oh, that batter is so good. Mm-hmm. I told you. Yeah. Mm. All right. Going in the oven. All righty. 35? 35. Okay. So now we are about to pull those bad baby cakes out of the oven. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop trying to spruce up the intro intros. <laughs> I love it. Those bad baby cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so we get our cakes out Ooh. and they, we let them rest for 15 minutes. And Becca does voice concern that maybe, maybe <laughs> her cake will stick in the pan. And I say, no, Becca, that's silly. That's never happened. <laughs> And then it happens, guys. You'll never <laughs> immediately. It. What are the chances? So this is, this I is... think you. I think you literally said, "Well, that has never happened. If that happened, you would be very special." And then I go, "It's not. <laughs> it's not falling out of the pan." What do you mean? No, <laughs> that's not. That never happened. <laughs> so that is fun. This is this is why we we are now saying I think very correctly caramel first then your fruit because i think maybe pairing putting the caramel in between the cake and the fruit didn't let the cake stick to the fruit properly mm. mm-hmm. and so like that's partly why you look like you're it kind of split down the middle because your cake yeah didn't adhere all together right. right so yeah hmm well, thanks for staying with us so far. You have made it to the last step where you get to hear, we've, we've obviously done a spoiler alert, but you'll get to hear us talk through getting it out of the oven and tasting it and all that fun stuff. So thanks for, thanks for hanging in with us so far. I think it's done. Yay. Hmm. I think that I, I need to put cinnamon in that next time or something. Oh. Vanilla. Cause it doesn't really have any, um, additional flavor like there's nothing in there to make the cake better huh you're right because some of the other recipes we looked at did have vanilla yeah and we should have maybe added that but oh well although in this situation is the caramel sauce the star yes i i mean that is going to make the most difference in how your cake how delicious your cake is sure Mm. so we've so we've both got our cakes out of the oven yep now Usually the, the because of the caramel sauce and that's got, you know, nice amount of fat in it, shouldn't be too hard to get your pan your cake out of the pan. Okay. I'm just kind of going around to like make sure that it's not sticking to the sides. So just kind of the going along the edges a little. Yeah. Okay. And the, my these have been resting for about what, 15 minutes well, at least. Yeah, maybe 20. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my god. I know it smells really good. I mean, and that, to me, upside down cakes, while they're good the first day, they're like usually, oh no, I pulled out one of my cherries. Even better oh. the next day. Oh, interesting. I think one of the recipes we saw said it was best immediately. Now, well, everyone's entitled to their opinion. This is different though because of the caramel sauce. Because mm-hmm. to me, like you have to let it cool at least some. Uh huh. And then when you flip it over, so I'm about to flip mine, mm-hmm. and I've put a plate over the over the top, and it's still quite warm. Uh, I kind of wish I was doing this with some sort of heat protecting thing, but it's not gonna hurt me. Got it. Here we go. Oh, oh, it popped right out. Nice. Oh, beautiful. It looks cute. Ooh, yay. Stuff stuck to this pan. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, that looks good. Yeah. What if mine so, doesn't come out? I've never had that problem with an upside down cake. So oh, you will be okay. very special, my friend. Oh, oh, man. Oh, that's very good. 
Mine's not coming out. Give it a minute. Did you go around the outside to just loosen it? Mm-hmm. Twice. Oh, no. Okay. Um, make sure you flip it with the board, okay? Yeah. Because I want you to flip it back over into the pan, okay? So flip, flip it back. Ugh. Okay. Oh, no. Looks like it halved itself. It halved itself? Well, it looks divided now. Let me show you. Oh, it, cr- it cracked in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess it did kind of come out. That's interesting. No. I'm going to flip it again. I'm going to say, yeah, pa- just pound on the top of the pan. Oh, bummer. Half of it stayed in the bottom. Oh, no. I know. I mean, did I not grease it enough? I mean, that's that. I don't know. It's coming up really easily. Maybe I didn't cook it enough. Oh, that's possible. So it looks if it was, cooked through. It's just. It, well, either that or you cooked it a little too long. Oh. And the cake dried out and cracked, which could be possible. Uh, bummer. Well, but that's pretty, pretty much your only options. But I'm going to try mine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's still. The way I need to cool. take pictures. Oh, yeah. Take pictures. I'm going to take a picture of this mess. <laughs> mm, I mean, it tastes good. I'm wondering if it's because I like the way I did the pineapple in the bottom. Mm, sitting, yours looks like, so good. Sitting in this puddle of caramel sauce. <laughs> a dream come true. Sitting in a puddle of caramel sauce. Yes, please. Well, I was thinking, oh, it's sad that it, you know, I didn't have something to pour over the bottom because I was worried the cake was a little dry. So I do think that tends to be a challenge with some of the upside down cakes. Sure. I think that's one of the reasons why I was so excited about the sour cream and the milk component. Just to keep it more tender. And moist, yeah. Mm -hmm. See what I've got going on in the center here. (laughs) The problem with the way I've done my pineapple is that it's not really adhered to the cake. (laughs) There's like a top (laughs) layer and it just is falling off. Oh, no. So I might do, if I was going to do this in the bunt again, Mm -hmm. I'd probably do chunk of pineapple versus slices. Yeah, just because. Well, because like, like it, it did, it didn't adhere to the cake very well. Okay. So got it. Mine's mm, a bit of good. a mess. So is mine, but I don't even care. Yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so good. I'm not sure if I cooked mine enough. Oh really? It's still a bit doughy. Interesting. Did your toothpick go all the way through? I thought so. Well. Or maybe this. The... So yeah, my cake's kind of gluey. Bummer. I might have mixed a little too much with the mixer. Yeah, I remember you saying. That the um that it wasn't mixing. No. Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, after I added the flour, I used the hand mixer, and I should have probably just stirred the flour in. Mm. Ah, I see. I don't know. Maybe t- next time I'll just use a box mix. That seems to work pretty fucking well for me. <laughs> I mean, if it's working, why fix? Why fix it? Yeah. Why mm. break it? Mm. Mm. Well, I hope your pictures look good because my cake is a mess. <laughs> It's going to be a delicious, delicious mess, though. Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I will still eat the fuck out of this. But yeah, I bought the Trader Joe's mix today just because I was like, just in case I need this later. Yeah, just thinking about it, too. So good. Okay, pineapple upside down cake. Oh, my God. Accomplished. Mission mm. accomplished. Check. Check. Mm. Okay, I got to take a bite. Yeah, you do. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. Nothing wrong it with that. It looks. Yeah. It looks ridiculous, and it is so, mm, so delicious so on my mouth. So, so good. Wow. Wow. Thank you. This has been amazing. You're welcome. <laughs> Dinner is served. <laughs> my dad. Yeah, is that just what you're at? You're like, I'm having that. No. I mean, we should, we need to, we got a sun basket, like, seafood kit on Wednesday, mm. and I want to try to use it tonight. Yeah. So, we need to do that. Yeah. But um, this is so good. This is be an appetizer. Final thoughts, guys, on this recipe. Not exactly sure where everything went wrong. Not everything. I shouldn't say everything. They were delicious, but just... They were so te- good. Texture-wise, my cake was very gluey. Some current theories we're running on are mixing in the flour with my mixed hand mixer was not a good idea because I overworked the flour. This, I feel like it might be the most likely scenario, but it also could be that I used the bunt pan when I should have been using a round pan. (laughs) Right, right. Because after we did a little research, we found out there's a reason you should not interchange a square and a round pan because square pans are 25% bigger than round pans, people. 
So mm-hmm. they are not mm-hmm. interchangeable. Nope. Like, now we know that. Eight inch square and a nine inch round, not interchangeable. Not interchangeable. So we definitely think that could be a contributing factor to one of the reasons why mine separated. About a quarter of it ended up just stuck in the pan. It did come out really easily. It just didn't stay combined as one unit. Yeah. And we also think maybe it could have been overcooked. It could have been slightly undercooked, but most likely it's probably just this difference in the pan shape. So I'm glad we know, but it was so delicious. I will do it again when I buy a round cake pan. (laughs) Or we just find a different recipe that calls for a square cake pan. There you go. There you go. (laughs) But yeah, this was an experience as they all are. (laughs) <laughs> don't like it when I when I fail on something as basic as a cake that never feels good. So yeah, imagine how my stomach dropped when you were like, "No, that'll never happen," and then it <laughs> happened, and I was like, "God damn it!" <laughs> I don't think that's your fault. <laughs> well, it was it was really good, and I, I will humbly share the photo of my cake on Instagram. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We will both show photos of our cakes. <laughs> yeah. Too bad I can't show photos of the texture of my cake because that would <laughs> definitely make a lot of people feel better because I was <laughs> real sad about it. <laughs> and and out of guilt, I ate most of it myself. So, oh, I mean, you had to. I had to. I could not subjugate someone else to that inferior product. So, no, you you had to atone. Yeah. <laughs> so we had fun we learned something we learned a lot about what not to do which is always <laughs> fun <laughs> basically the entire point of this podcast what you shouldn't do we le- we tried it for you don't do what we did don't do what we did <laughs> just don't do it yeah <laughs> but find us on facebook youtube instagram where we're sharing pictures and videos gretchen's been doing a great job with the videos and then highgluttony.com, where we've got all of our recipes and thoughts. And we will see you next time. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> Jazz hands. <Toodaloo. laughs>